Are you sick and tired of being destroyed by every tier 7 in a tier 5 match? Are you someone with such a rage boner for tryhards at tier 10? Did mommy let you drink the Pepto-Bismol in the medicine cabinet? If you said yes to any of these, then welcome to the tier 5 diaries! <laughs> well, if, I mean, if you said no, that'd be kind of awkward. Guns in tier 5 come in many calibers, and fire a plethora of different kinds of ammo. Um, the three types of guns you can run into in any match of order tanks are going to be the Pecker, the competitive guns, and the Derps. Uh, for the Pecker, these guns tend to be a little bit smaller, not enjoyable on the receiving end, but formidable for their jobs to deal multiple shots and do a shit ton of damage in a short period of time. Reloads will be in the range of a second and a half to around like two seconds and uh, will hit constantly from like 50 to 100 damage. Uh, more commonly, you will see um, this more on Russian tanks. The 57 is very famous. Anyway, people who take a liking to the pecker, quote unquote, tend to think it's funny to draw penises on my script. <laughs> Let's talk competitive now. The competitive gun is like the happy medium between the pecker and the derp gun. It's able to carry out the task uh, at hand effectively with reloads between 3 and 6 seconds, which will do about 120 to 180 damage a shot. These tend to perform in pretty well all round. Pretty self-explanatory. And moving on, we have the derp guns. Probably the most fun of the three. These derp cannons are slow and they tend to ruin anybody's day whenever they fall victim to the power. Um, reloads are usually around 6 to 10 seconds and will slap for around 200 to 400 damage if used correctly. Okay, so going to ammo here, I'm going to simplify here everything according to tier 5. However, there is way too much to cover all the ammo. As I cover individual tanks, I will go over the pen values and what kinds of ammo you'll be working with. So here's a basic guide, just in case. Uh, the armor piercing, aka the OP, aka the OG, aka the red striped shell. This will most likely be your standard ammunition for most of your tanks uh, until shit gets serious in higher tiers, and that's when you start firing a BCR standard. Speaking of ACPCR, uh, armor piercing composite rigid is what nerds would call it, but like really everybody should just call it a PCR. Uh, these shells are, will more often be, than not be used as premium ammo for most of your main armaments. Um, they're mostly identifiable by the odd shape and the black stripe. So to define the own shape, I decided to make it as a dildo, essentially, uh, for your you know 3D convenience. So here you go. Talking about HE. I like to think about using an axe to end someone's miserable and fragile life force. Simply put, if you hit them in the right spot, you'll carry a task more successfully than the others. Um, these shells are orange and move slow. They tend to fly in the air a little bit more, uh, but will more often than not deal damage to the recipient, which means like these shells, they won't penetrate often, but they will still do a consistent amount of damage. But if you penetrate, then it'll leave a huge mark. Now looking at the high explosive anti-tank, the yellow shells or heat for anybody who wants to fit more words in a sentence before taking a breath. <gasps> this shell is more direct option for derp guns, however mostly maintaining damage output for a little bit more pen. Um, so basically they behave more like AP shells where they have to penetrate in order to deal full damage and sometimes the penetration is a little bit better but you do not do the consistent damage of the regular high explosive does. You'll see in some gameplay here. Okay, moving on to armor. Armor is very serious. Uh, mostly trial and error when it comes to armor. Uh, I will be going over like individually like as a tank what your best armor values are and as well as you know what 
counters and tears you'll run into at tier 5. You know, uh, one of the biggest ones was the T29. Um, <laughs> uh, that's always been a uphill slope, but hey, once you learn it, once you learn how to counter it, you know, your pen values and everything, you can counter these things easy and they become nothing, which will ultimately help you through remark these tanks. You dare look into the eyes of a god. Anyway, for talking about consumables, if you're a more experienced player, you'd probably understand the importance of like loading consumables, even if they were just small. Um, for new players that are learning a bit more here, you will always have to use consumables. It is the first thing anybody should load onto their tank. Same thing with ammunition. Congrat. Here is your baby. Crews are a naturally growing thing in this game. Odds are you have one fully perked crew that uh, you have traded between tanks. If you don't, uh, you have not played this game enough. Crews and crew perks are going to be mostly fundamental in every game you're in, whether it be you know just to spot someone earlier or to bring your reload down a second or two. Breaking down perks is going to be like for a separate video because like ammo, there is a lot of perks to cover. Or I'll just go. For uh, the top six or top five perks for every tank. Okay, so I know there's a lot of information on this video about what's important, and I'm hoping I don't miss everything, but, you know, this is so I can exactly tell you what I'm going to be covering per tank, because I want to focus these all on, um, you know, just the basic tank. Um, if you like this video, please leave some feedback down below, or if you have an unfilled anger as to why I do series like this, please wait until the next chapter in Tier 5 Diaries where I begin anew on the M4 Sherman, the basis of all Tier 5 Diaries. Why did I spend time doing this? <laughs>